good boy. So the aim for today's warm-up will just be a nice efficient squat warm-up of two kind of very specific areas that cause me some trouble when I'm squatting and that also cause me some trouble when I'm running. So these are the two areas I'm going to really focus on. First one of these is adductor tightness. And that kind of comes into some hamstring tightness as well but mainly that kind of medial side of the hamstring. So lunges work well for me to warm that up. I'll then be getting into some front foot raise split squats, just to really focus on that. And then some static stretching, nothing major. And then the second thing I really need to focus on is my actual hip extension. So obviously we work a lot at a desk, on a computer, my hips tend to shorten up quite a lot. Funnily enough, running shortens up my hip flexors as well. Probably just some bad running form. Today's squats, many of you will recognize as day one of the RTA 2.0. Sets of 12. Woo! <clears throat> Although I really hate squatting, but my knee is super far out as I'm warming up for the squat. This kind of very knees out focus helps me just to loosen up my hips, helps me improve my overall squat position. And just generally helps me achieve a better position overall, even with my upper back. So today's session is gonna be nice and efficient. It's gonna be nice and uh, not so much fast. It'll be just over an hour long. I've got Murphy with me, who you would have seen already in the video. Murphy got into some stuff he shouldn't have got into on Thursday night. And he, uh, he's on observation now. So he was in doggy hospital for, for 24 hours. But he's all good now. Feeling a bit under the weather, but he's okay. Isn't that right, Murph? <clears throat> so once I've done just two rounds of around 20 lunges and some of those squats, I'm just really going to start off nice and slowly, just with some split squats. On these spots, my main focus is dropping straight down, so I'm not going for that kind of knees forward. I'm just thinking about my hips, staying straight underneath my shoulders, dropping straight down and coming up and activating my hip at the top. So this is actually hitting that full hip extension, but also just helping to warm up my legs. I like to have a bit of a pump in my quads before I start squatting. Obviously, today's session, very, very voluminous. So I don't need to worry too much about getting any additional volume in my warm up. Just want to make sure I'm primed and ready to hit those squat positions that I need to hit. training in this gym a very long time. That squat rack just there is where Owen did his second 290 kilo back squat. So I remember it's actually with this bear and this bear is slightly bent ever since. It's funny how you get attached to just using certain pieces of equipment. I like the bear. I like a bit of rust on the knurling. 
Feels good. Time for some shoes. These shoes are not the best shoes for me to squat in. They're, uh, they're old, the support isn't great. Hello Murph. The support really isn't great, but the heel height is the main issue on these for me. So my Nike Ram 2s that I would have always trained in are a far better shoe for me. But I'm like eight months out from my heaviest squat. So right now, I just like wearing these squat shoes. Also force me to really think about pushing my knees forward. <clears throat> force me to open up the ankles a small bit more, which when combined with all the long distance in inverted commas runs I'm doing at the moment, it's no bad thing at all. So probably gonna run my first iteration of the RTA 2.0 with these. So 12 weeks with these and then move on to some better shoes or shoes that suit me a bit better for the game time squats. quad tightness or more specifically hip flexor tightness but it's okay I'll sort itself out so the squats are going to be four sets of 12 with 80 kilos so we always recommend starting with conservative maxes so I've no doubt that right now I could grind out a very slow and hard 190 maybe 200 uh, without really training for the last year and a half um, but 60 or 160 makes a far better starting max for me just means my progressions are going to be far more consistent from week to week you'll be able to follow on and see those obviously and it just means that i'll be able to do the other training i need to do at the same time without absolutely murdering myself This is going to be starting off a block to run, hopefully, until August. Maybe to start to September. It'd be great to get it done before September. Obviously, these things take a lot of time. So, going to be running kind of two distinct blocks. The first block is going to be very, very focused on 5K times. So, a lot of 5K runs, a lot of 3K runs. Going to do few more track sessions at Owen. Those track sessions where we're doing the sprinting aren't massively valuable to me. They're not really working on the, the particular areas I need to focus on, but they are valuable in terms of building that ankle stiffness, in terms of building some just better sprinting form and running form overall, as well as just fun to train with someone else. Running training can be pretty boring, so it's good that Owen's doing some sprints, fall in with him on the track, and then go from there. Set number three, my arse crack was showing quite severely on the last two sets. So better tie the shorts.
one more to go. So, just realized some people might be wondering why there's a chainsaw and axes and tow ropes in the back of my Jeep. Currently have a tornado warning and I'm down towards West Cork. I had to come down here anyway for some other business. So just said, in case there's any trees down on the way, not to be a burden on anyone. And let's we get a gym session in without having to, to get in anyone's way. Hey, Murphy is, as I said, under the weather a little bit. So we'd say, Toshi Beganin Gubronok, which means he's a small bit sad. He's a very cuddly boy today. If any of you familiar with Vishla's there, not usually this quiet. He's usually destroying things. Good boy. <clears throat> so last set. So four sets of 12 in the first session. So now comes by far the most important part of any of the training programs or of any training program, generally speaking, is the absolutely pivotal accessory work. Hello, Mer. I thought it was just outside of your range. <coughs> so as I said, some of the accessory work now is gonna be specifically tailored for me. Some of the stuff is gonna be from the RTA2. Over the course of the week, I'm gonna do all the RTA2 accessories but I'll just split them over a couple of different sessions. I'll do some before and after jujitsu training and then some after squats. And this is the perfect time to be listening to some tunes. So a lot of you will recognize this gym, obviously from GERF's 290 that we saw years ago, but also from some Clarence vlogs. This is a gym that a business partner and I opened years ago, and Teddy's now running it all on his own. This is one of the coolest things I love about the gym. So first day we opened, everybody wrote their names on the board, and then as members came back over the years, write their names up, some lifetime goals. And this is something that motivates me all the time. I hope that's in shot. <clears throat> so maybe that's something we'll get to take off this year. Another thing that training in gyms like this gives you is like constant changes, constant cool things. Obviously having a cool basketball hoop up there is pretty cool, a climbing wall. But the lads the whole time are adding to this gym. Nice timber dowel holder. Over the last few months, over the last 18 months, obviously a lot of questions have been coming in. Where's Dara's training vlog? Why isn't Fitch training? So since the September before last, I've just thrown myself into Jiu Jitsu, been doing as many Jiu Jitsu sessions as possible, Got promoted last summer, which I'm absolutely delighted about. Plenty of competitions, nice few competitions overseas last year. And just trying to really prioritize that. Wanted to get better, get some skill learning in. And the other thing I wanted to do is just recover a small bit. My body took a beating last time. Probably wasn't the most intelligent with how heavily I drove things during that, that second attempt at the five and 500. So, just took a bit of a break. I was cursed last year. We got six staph infections. We got scarlet fever. 
I also did my back in pretty badly, picking up a sheet of paper off the floor. So just trying to get myself back in line, get myself back to be pretty healthy before I start really driving, training hard again. And these are the fruits of all that labor, of all that rest. And by fruits, I mean being incredibly weak, not feeling very powerful or explosive, but it's been a lot of positives in the last year. So I really can't complain, but I'm absolutely buzzing to get back into training now. And uh, it's taken a while, it's taken a lot of bullying from Owen and from a few of our other friends, like Paddy and John. A lot of uh, just good old fashioned bullying. You really can't beat it. But as we always say, when you take time off, when you come back to training, you should be in the best mindset possible to return to training. You should be so, so happy to get back into the gym. You should be buzzing for all your increases from week to week. And that's what we always say. So just really trying to, to listen to my own advice for once and, uh, and do things some way intelligently. Part of that, of course, is some stretches. About to go out of my mind. The rain keeps a falling, 